Welcome, uh, members of council, staff, and the public. We, this is the reconvening of the <coughs> Committee of the Whole meeting from January the 8th. And the first item, uh, I call to order and declare quorum. First item is the adoption of the agenda uh, that the Committee of the Whole meeting of, oh, no, that's, that the thing. No, no that, that the recess committee of the whole meeting of January 8th be reconvened. It's moved by Council Durley. Any additions, changes? <coughs> Very loud. All in favor? Thank you. All right, so let's go back. I think we were... Cemeteries. Where were we? Cemeteries. Oh, my God, we started cemeteries. <laughs> <laughs> of all places to start, we started cemetery. It's just it's my tab, favorite. Tab Before we finish, Mr. Tab 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 Chair. Before we finish. <coughs> At least so. Okay. Uh, yeah, we had done the vehicles, and we'll come back to. I have a couple of things about that, but we'll talk about the vehicles. Madam Treasurer, go right ahead. All right, the next one is the cemeteries. Madam Treasurer. So the next item that we have here on the capital are the cemeteries. And um, I'm going to ask the Director of Public Works to see if there's any comments she wants to make on the cemeteries. Madam Director. For you, if I may sit. Sit up, yeah. Okay. Uh, Give you sunglasses Mr. or something Chair. like that. As one project on deck, and this, uh, like the others in facilities, stems from the condition assessment that was done in 2014, uh, where the consultant recommended improvement to the um, HVAC mechanical systems. Comes a question to the director about the, uh, I guess it would be the installation or repair of the ventilation at the mausoleum. Anybody? No. Hearing none, let's move on. Thank you. Like me to go through each one? Well, yeah, why don't we do like we did the last time? If the, there's a list of one, two, three, four, five items um, sanitary lateral, sanitary sewer inspection, pollution control, Foss Road update, and Rice Road North uh, sewer services. I need comments or questions about these projects. Everybody good with them? Okay, hearing none. Mr. Chair, just hang on. Oh, go ahead, uh, Councilor um, Thursey. Oh. Or Mr. Mayor, we, uh, I had asked the staff, I guess, uh, in an email, um, and maybe they can furnish this with council. Just to, what will the regarding um, number five? What will the total cost be as additional dollars? So for Rice Road, yeah, Rice Road North. <coughs> Thanks, so Mr. Just, Mayor. Just looking for that. Um, Madam Director, can you respond to the mayor's query? Through you, Mr. Chair, I apologize. I didn't remember to pull up that number with regards to the previously approved project. Yeah. I want to say by recollection it was about 266000 I can pull that number up quite quickly. With regards to the question about the comparison in relation to the sale of the properties and the cost effectiveness that was part of the email, that I wouldn't be able to address. Okay. So how do you... Thank you, Madam Director. Mr. Mayor, how do you want to? I, I would, yeah, I don't know if council. Well, they need to. I, I, I was I, looking I, for the, yeah. what the total amount is. I, I, I didn't recall it being that much or that amount. So um, maybe somebody can provide that to us, what that, what that amount is. Okay, so. And that might be a combination of a few things and one budget here and one budget there or whatever, but. So the request through uh, to you, Madam Treasurer and Madam Director of Public, uh, that we provide those figures and incorporate them as part of the capital budget reflecting the Rice Road North. Uh, just, yeah, I'm wondering, just for the information. Just for the information. Just for the, you don't need anything, but no, we need it for information, so we're clear. Is that all for information? Anybody else? I don't think we need so. You good with that? Uh, uh, Councilor Kersey. Um, on to another matter on to, under sanitary under, sure by all means with? under wastewater yep um i wondered uh with respect to the foss road upgrade is that 
is that in keeping with the planning for uh, East Fenwick or whereabouts is that upgrade going to be be happening through you mr. chair the um, upgrade is part of an upgrade to Foss and um, church and a piece of Welland Road. It's been identified for some time. It's in our existing development charge bylaw to do these capacity upgrades uh, well in advance of the East Fenwick um, secondary plans. This will help to accommodate um, East Fenwick, but we don't have that final, those final recommendations from that project yet. There will be some um, interaction of, of those that data from the capacity calculations that were done some time ago for this mm -hmm. versus the, the increased capacity with the development of East Fenwick. So this is an advance um, to, to get things moving, to update our model, to talk about exactly what we're um, needing to do for capacity and would take into account the estimate <coughs> that we are honing in on the number of units in East Fenwick. Um, and this would allow us to accommodate the small infill development that's starting to, we're starting to see in uh, Fenwick as well. Councilor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, through you, Sorry. with respect, would it not be better to wait until we see the final East Fenwick uh, plan where they're going to put forward um, what sort of capacity we're going to need in the Foss Road um, upgrade? Uh, like, uh, if why would we do that in advance of that uh, uh, as opposed to waiting until we have the East Fenwick plan which I understand will be coming forward this year and, and would specify the demand and the sizing uh, that is required uh, madam director Here you mr. chair um, at this point with the East Fenwick plans that have been discussed we have a quite a firm idea and there is a large factor of safety built into the capacity calculations. It doesn't go right down to the tens of houses. It's as long as we can guesstimate um, or estimate the approximate number of units um, based on what has come forward from that secondary plan already. The pressing concern is we are operating at a high capacity in Fenwick currently. Mm -hmm. um, we are at risk. And without giving more details to that, because we have active developments, the sooner we get ahead of this, the better, taking full into account, fully into account, the, the planned capacity in the east side of Fenwick would roll into that study. We would, um, we would not be into full approved designs until that um, secondary plan is finalized anyways. We would have that opportunity to share the information. Okay, Councilor Chrissy. <clears throat> I was I'm not sure that I understand the answer, particularly, Mr. I mean, Chair. I, I take it from what the director has said, the 450 millimeter diameter has enough redundancy built into it that regardless of what happens in the East Fenwick design, we have capacity. Am I reading too much into the comments or? Through you, Mr. Chair, this is a recommendation taken right from the development charge bylaw. Before we go ahead, we would start right from scratch and, and revisit all of the assumptions that go into that design. We wouldn't go into it instructing the designing engineer to um, build a 450. It would be to consider all of the capacity inputs and remodel that and give us an updated estimate. Um, when we took a preliminary look at it, though, yes, we felt that the 450 would still have more than enough room based on the information that was provided at the time of the, the last DC bylaw. Okay, and uh, Councilor Ribbich, sorry, go ahead. Thank you. This is uh, beyond the East Fontilla implication. Are we still on East Fontilla? Or can I? No, this is this is uh, yeah, Foss Road. Foss right, Road. right. So, with regard to, to Foss Road, um, are there implications to the sizing that comes out of the? Um, potential work that's going to be done on Baxter Lane, Baxter Hall. Is that also uh, a consideration in determining the capacity and the need for, for moving ahead with this now? Through you, Mr. Chair, yes. Uh, today I had uh, some email uh, discussions with the Director of Planning about our um, hold 
in the zoning change on that property, particularly about this matter and making sure that we are doing our due diligence to increase our capacity um, in line with these developments coming forward. We're hoping that should this be approved that the timing will align, that as that development and others are fully built out to the point that the impact on capacity comes becomes real, that we would have the um, high risk areas already upgraded. So if I may, Mr. Mr. Chair, through you, where where um, in the plan is it this year or next that we are going to have to do any work that is associated with wastewater requirements of Baxter Hall? It's not just possible. I would imagine it's somewhere between the corner of Baxter and Cambria and and Foss Road. Through you, Mr. Chair, in 2019, we have uh, church um, upgrades on, or along church and along that portion of um, Welland Road also included. Okay, so that's that's next year and it's not anticipated to be needed before then. But the, the outlet on Foss Road would need to be ready for it, I suppose. Through you, Mr. Chair, the the recommendation is based on risk and the highest constraint on capacity. So where the pipes are at almost full capacity or full capacity and surcharging in manholes, that's where we need to focus first on getting some, some upgrades done. So we can only go on our flow measurements and our model and that's where we started was where there's currently the most restraint and you work backwards from there. Okay, so it's a, it's a current issue that needs to be dealt with. Okay, that's got correct. It. Mm -hmm. So let me understand this, Madam Director. Anybody else before? Uh, Councillor Lane, go ahead. Yeah, well, I, mine's a rather simple question, I believe, and uh, it's what's the uh, different sizes of, of, of pipes are, are there used around town? Like it's 450 near the, the the large end of the diameter, or are there ones that are still larger yet than that? Madam Thank Director. you, Mr. Chair. Um, for town ownership, then generally eight inches typically are largest. We do have um, odds and sods through easements and legacy pipes that we've uh, inherited, but we try not to encourage larger capacity because we run into low and maintenance issues, but sometimes with trunk mains, absolutely, they go larger. Uh, we tend to see those more on the regional trunk mains than in ours. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. <coughs> Chair. Um, the financing, development charges, Wastewater reserve, it says in other 181,000. What's what's the other? Um, Madam Treasurer, or um, okay. While you're um, yeah, we'll that up. thank you. I'd like to uh, just to pick up on it. So the whole idea is, as simply as I can see it, uh, on behalf, of, you want to upgrade from this particular size to this size in order to handle the capacity we've got going through there now, right? And you want this, as I take it, uh, forgive my sim simplicity, is to complete this project this year, construction, etc., design, and everything be done. Whatever happens after that, as far as East Fenwick and that, would be added on or be part of other design considerations. Is that fair to say? Because I'm hearing that uh, we also are looking at areas along Church Church Street. And well, others. yeah. But just for this purpose, the Foss Road is the intent is to complete it, upgrade it, upsize it. Is that fair to say? Okay, Mr. Chair, the intent would be to do this once for just the, once. Next, the That's foreseeable right. future. So we would incorporate the projected units with a healthy factor of safety to include the consideration of, or, or the uh, build out of East Fenwick. So current and future possibility of the build out to be able to handle any flow of liquid through there. Okay, that's what I thought. So I'll have to look up where, where are the others coming from and I'll get the answer. Okay, there. so we'll, we'll come back to that, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, okay, thanks. To uh, Sorry, clarify what other means. Any other questions on this particular sheet? I just wondered if it was a grant. Yeah. So is it a grant? Yeah. Okay, thanks. 
I'm not sure yet. No, okay, well, why don't we, instead of belaboring, we'll get the answer to make sure we understand yeah. where the moolah's coming from. Yeah, usually it's the grants. I mean, this year's budget is either development charges, the in-year uh, transfer to reserves, or other right. uh, grants. Okay. Are we good with that? Then let's move on to tab. Next uh, one is water. Water, please, Madam uh, Treasurer. Madam Director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I might clarify, again, the field is cut off. This is actually the Station Street water main replacement. Okay, that's Station Street. In a trench. Right. Instead of, uh, we tried to time it that we would do Station Street floor road reconstruction and replace the water main at that time. That's what I thought. We are um, going to postpone that full road reconstruction, so it would be, um, again, based on risk and the senior population, the breaks. Um, and the inability for us to properly isolate those high risk, high density apartments, it would be prudent for us as it's been um, brought forward in budgets for several years to replace that water main. We can do it in a trench, hopefully with trenchless technology to minimize the disruption along that road. Any other comments? Everybody good? All right. Next one is uh, community planning and development. I love it. It's zero. The library services, we heard the library presentation uh, back in December. They did have the proposal. Right, they were here the other day, so. And we deferred it for at least another year. And uh, the municipal drain, there are any Okay. Sorry. Go Sorry. ahead, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thanks. Just back to planning. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, as we've come through the capital budget and we do things like, or we've done things like these final secondary plan, we've had to, you know, include additional dollars. So first question, you know, the funding that's there already for existing programs, is there enough there to complete it for those mm -hmm. programs? Good, good point. I guess there is because there's no budget reference. This is to complete the East Fenwick secondary yeah. plan and um, the, the, stuff, the other stuff we're working on, like Hay Street and mm -hmm. zoning. Yes. It's zoning by line. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, sufficient resources to complete those yes. particular. Okay. okay great. The yeah. other question was um, the province did listen to us and change the designation um, of Hamlet in Ridgeville, and I knew we were working together with the region on that. I'm not sure if they're taking the lead or we're taking the lead, so it's not here. Are they taking the lead? Um, the uh, region has to proceed with their amendment first, okay, and then we can proceed with our amendment. Um, so we've been working with the region on um, establishing what that boundary may be. Mm. Um, I have to get some information back to the region with respect to that. We've got two or three different um, proposed boundaries. They're wanting to know what would be the infill development in each of those um, because they want to ensure that whatever is the final boundary for um, Ridgeville that it would only allow for a limited uh, right. development. Right. I think, yeah, the, the province is thinking the same way as is this council. So, yeah. okay. Um, so would that be covered in future years under sort of the official plan amendment and official plan updates that we're doing in the reviews? Um, or is Mr. it separate? Mayor, yeah, um, it's probably going to be dealt with as uh, a standalone official plan amendment, and I would think it would be something that we would just do internally in-house. Okay, perfect. Um, as opposed to hiring consultants to uh, help us with that. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions for any of the others? So just so I'm clear, the library <coughs> services capital request has been deferred to 2018. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair. On the capital budget summary, it does indicate that it's grants of 360,570. Thank you very much, Charlotte. That, that helps. Mr. Mayor? Thank you. Okay. 
Next Madam Treasurer. Oh, go ahead. Hang on. Uh, Councilor Kersey has a Council question. Councilor Kersey, go ahead. Uh, what if we don't get the what grant? Those, get are those, the those are those guaranteed grants. We already have the notice of the grants, right? Yeah, gonna, uh, so, tax yes. So uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we have the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund as well as gas tax funding, which we already have the agreements for, so we know which projects are eligible in those categories. Okay, so we've yeah. So they've been nailed down in the we funds. Have yeah, long-term okay. agreements. Okay, okay, perfect. That's good to know. Good. All right, Madam Treasurer. Uh, five-year capital plans. Um, so we've listed the five-year capital plans in the budget package. Uh, we do have a 20-year capital plan that exists. Um, and as you're aware, part of the strategic plan for 2018 is for us to update the asset management capital plan. Um, just to finish off, long-term debt in the, uh, in the operating budget. Uh, the long-term debt for uh, 2018 $33 million, and, uh, and I worked out how it's the interest in principal coming out of the operating budget is 1.3, out of the development charges is 1.5, and then there's a small portion of 25000 of the park land. So that is the total. Uh, so the annual repayment limit, which has an annual limit of 25%, in 2018, the town is at 156 Comments, questions, members of council? Mr. Mayor. Just to comment on that, I think the important piece here, um, <coughs> you know, there's, there's lots of rhetoric about, about debt and, there's, and then there's facts. So the fact is on the screen that the, the debt for operating, that is if you were going to go for a per capita comparison, it would be the 15 million. And then the 18 million, 18.3 is funded by development charges. So. You know, there's there's others, maybe on different councils somewhere, that are talking about oh, there's per capita numbers and you add it all in. No, it doesn't make sense to do that because capita, i.e., people, aren't paying for that 18 million. It's it's as the new homes are constructed, and over a period of time, it's going to be paid that way. So, 55 percent of our debt is development charge debt. 45 is it says operating debt is levy debt property tax debt so when when you know folks are going around and they're comparing between municipalities and saying you know this municipality and that municipality some of the municipalities like port colburn doesn't have development charges so its debt is i think it's uh i forget what the number is but it's much higher on the per capita side than our debt because they don't have development charges St. Catharines doesn't have development charges, and it compares favorably to our debt in a per capita basis. So, you know, I think folks like to just mix it all together, maybe because they don't understand it, maybe because some do understand it, and they like to mix it all in. <clears throat> so I want to point that out, that 55% of our debt is the, going to be paid by future growth, and 45 by residents. Well, why is that? I think that's an important feature as well. So council will recall, and you see some of them on here, uh, fire station number two is on here for development charge debt. Why is that? Well, because we actually, just as we we're having the discussion about pipes uh, for, for in the Fenwick area, we actually upsized, made that fire hall larger, anticipating that there's going to be growth. Well, how do you pay for that? Well, that gets paid for out of development charges because the upsizing or the making larger and appropriate for the future growth shouldn't be paid by existing residents, should be paid by that future growth, and that's, that's what we've done. Um, also in here is the, um, um, I think it's in here, the library I thought was in here. Um, it, you know, half of the library is development charge debt, the other half is, is a levy debt when that comes on. The skate park was all, most of it, there's questions in the KPMG um, report, you may have seen that, questions about the funding for that. That was mostly paid for, I think, all paid for by development charge. Uh, so new growth. And, and uh, there's other things here, downtown Fenwick revitalization. A lot of it was paid for, out of, or is going to be paid for by development charges. Port Robinson reconstruction, uh, and here's the amount for the community center. Again, we are 
upsizing the community center, making it larger, and about one third of that is going to be paid by development charges. I think it's an important point. And so, Mr. Chair, I'm pleased to underscore it, and I please you, appreciate your latitude in letting me underscore it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, any uh, Council Kersey? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to kind of follow up on what uh, the Mayor has alluded to, I think it's also important to point out that our current debt is at 15.6 of our 25%. I did some quick calculations. If I took 3.5% interest rate over 30 years, we, in fact, could borrow up to $64 million would be our capacity. We would have, we could add $32.5 million in additional debt and still be within the limit set by the province. So all the outcry and all of the fact that, that our debt, we are at our debt limit or we have exceeded our debt limit makes no sense when one looks at the actual facts and the revenue sources of the town and apply the formulas that are provided to us by the province when they when we go through a provincial application and approval process. We must qualify at the province in order to have the debt put forward by the region. And the region is not the approval source. The province is the approval source and we have to meet their guidelines to get approved. So what I'm pointing out, Council, is that we have not exceeded our capacity. We have lots of room to leverage if we choose to. That's not the direction we're going, but I think it's important for the public to understand that we're well within our debt limit and really on safe ground. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the latitude. Thank you, Council Kersey. Anybody else? Any other members? All right, hearing none, uh, let's move back to the beginning and the questions, and let's start this way if all of you are in agreement. Uh, there are a few things that we asked for at last meeting, and Mr. CEO, I think, has provided us with <coughs> one is a, a series of options for us to consider with respect to the, uh, the reduction in the levy. Right, so before we do that, oh. Go right ahead, Ask. I wanted to um, introduce the director in charge to bring forward the staff and planning Okay, the staffing plan I see here is for public works, is that correct? Okay, so yes, I was not going to exclude that. I also want to mention that there are a few other issues that I would like a chance for councillors to ask questions and get clarification. Uh, I'd say the majority of them are operating, they're not a lot, but some of them deal with some of the stuff that came up during the, op the capital budget. So, all right, so what's the preference of council? Do you want to deal with the, the overall overview of the reduction or do you Want, let's do you want to deal with uh, I know we were deal, talking about all the hours etc with respect to what was going on the Council Rivia I, I suspect uh, mr. chair that staff has something in mind with regard to a presentation maybe we should find out what they're planning to provide right. to us so let's start uh, madam treasurer as you said we'll bring madam director of uh, human resources <coughs> up and you handed out some documents to us with respect to the reorganization of the public works and slash community center correct Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So what you'll see is two bubbles on, uh, in front of you. One has a series of organizational charts, and the other one has a new staffing model. So, so let's just make sure we have those. This is the... Here. Yeah. What does the other one look like? Or is it? There's a breakdown, uh, I guess... Uh, okay, so it's like this one. I haven't seen, seen that one. Sort of a spreadsheet okay. breakdown. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Hold on. It's, it's with the same... It's, it's with the... Uh, I'm going to lodge a complaint. I don't have that. Well, good luck on that. Okay. Find someone who cares. <laughs> Thank you. I know. I'm back. Great. Thanks. Sorry about that. It's okay. Okay, Madam Director, the floor is yours. Uh, the issue, as we mentioned before, was the whole fact that the previous discussion revolved around public works slash and the implications of staffing requirements out within the whole department and the community center. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, the feedback that was given to me was again that the um, I had not presented to you the logic that got us to the um, the ask that we presented last week. So I thought I'd take a step back and walk you through that logic. So, I just, so if you don't mind, just please bear with me. 
Um, just to give a little bit of history, um, when you create a scaffold uh, model, the first thing that you do is look at your, your building or whatever it is that you're staffing and understand what is the bare minimum? What is the minimum staff that you need in that building just to turn the lights on at the beginning of the day? So we did that. Um, we did that. So I just want to show you. Okay, so if you look at the top, the red is our um, hot side or our warm side. So it's everything that's, that's um, community center related. And then the blue is our cold side, and that is really what we consider our um, twin pads. So non-peak, just open up the building. My recommendation is that we have one employee on the warm side and one employee on the cold side. And um, the task that they'd be doing when they open up the building at the beginning of the day, would, and again, we have an arena already, so essentially we're gonna lift and land that staffing model and put it into the new PCC. And we're gonna um, add some hours again because now we have two pads instead of just one. So right now we know the staffing model works tried and true. We know that on a non-peak day when we don't have any uh, business happening in the arena, our one facility operator will come in, they'll do ice maintenance, they'll uh, work on their Zamboni, they'll sharpen their blades, um, and, and they'll get things ready for the business that's supposed to come in. Um, what we also need now on our warm side is we need somebody there who's going to make sure that they're actually operating the building. So to give you an example, um, we need somebody who will constantly be doing walks through that building to ensure that the 41 toilet stalls that we have have toilet paper in them. And this is a huge jump from the eight that we currently have. Like we have 41 toilets that we'll need to make sure that they're serviced properly. Um, they'll need to, we have, we're inviting people to come in um, to um, sit. As we said, this is gonna be a place for our seniors to come in. We want them to come in, we want them to have their coffee, read their paper, meet with their friends, maybe play some cards, look at the wonderful art installations that we have. We need to have somebody who's going to be walking that building to make sure you know, they're wiping down tables, if, the, if there should be a coffee spill, that they're getting to that coffee spill. Um, with the weather that we're having now, if slush is brought into the building, we need to have somebody there who's going to have them mop in a wet floor sign to make sure that our building is safe for the people who are in there. On top of that, that's just the daily running. When we think about making it safe for the people who are in the building, we also want to make sure that we have that person who's in the building who knows who, who is in the building, who has a, an awareness, so that should somebody need assistance on the walking track or should there a child be missing, there's somebody for our um, visitors to go to. So we need somebody who is going to be there just to make sure this building is running and the lights are on. So thank you for that. That was rather long-winded, but that is my recommendation. At the very minimum, we always have at least two people whose job is to make sure this building is, is operating. Um, in our peak periods, you'll see that again, um, our cold side, which is our facilities, has um, four people. I'm really jumping ahead of myself, I apologize. And our warm side is one, and then our non-peak is two people on our, on our cold side and one person on our warm side. I'm gonna get into those in a minute, but I really just wanted to lay that foundation of what is really minimum staffing. And again, my recommendation for this building is minimum staffing is at least two. Now I'm gonna take you back to the, that very first um, organizational chart that uh, you have there. So going back to work that's taken place over the last two years, this was, and I had mentioned it last week that what you were getting was really an edited version of what my uh, staffing recommendation was. This is really that full version. This is the staffing recommendation. So if you'll see anybody- The primary, the primary one? Pardon me? This is the primary recommendation? This was the original. This is not the recommendation that we're going with now, but I do want you to see the cuts that we've made in order to make this um, workable for, um, for uh, the 2017 calendar year. So you'll see that anybody in green is an existing staff member. And um, we had under our manager of facilities, they had three direct reports. We had our supervisor of facilities, which is the new position that we're continuing to ask for. We have the supervisor of maintenance, which is a position that we have eliminated. And we have our facilities rental associate. Again, it's a position that we continue to ask for. Under our supervisor of facilities, we have our facilities operators. So yellow means it's an existing position, but we're asking for more headcount to beef it up. So we've asked for more facilities um, uh, operators uh, in the um, head of two fixed term uh, staff members. Again, this is to um, make sure we have people there for the operating of the building. Um, 
and we've asked for an addition to our rink attendance going from five uh, to eight. So I'm going to pause there for a second. I'm going to ask you to go to that um, staffing chart, the very first one that's listed arena staffing. So you can see that this is the work that's gone into determining how many heads we're asking for. So you can see that um, uh, in partnership with our Director of Public Works and our Director of uh, Recreation, Culture and Wellness, uh, we spent a lot of time in 2015 um, having conversations and meetings with uh, um, other municipalities that ran similar um, facilities as well as looking at you know our historical data what we know because we're kind of experts in running this and this is what we came up with we came up with our, our non-peak times our mid volume times and our peak times so that's what um, is our staffing uh, expectation our staffing model and it is from there that our headcount asks comes from this is where that stems okay so you can see this is why we are asking for those two additional fixed term uh, people because we do need them in order to support the uh, second arena or second um, ice pad as well as to make sure that we're still able to maintain the rest of the duties that the department is responsible for do you want to take questions now or do you want to like yeah, I have some, but okay. the open because I, I there are some obvious questions to be. Councilor Ribiak. Yeah, just uh, look, looking at this chart, it says 2018 arena staffing requirements. So this is just the mm -hmm. the cold side. Yes, this, this is cold, just the cold side. side. This is literally lifting what we have already and putting it in, and then beefing up the head count to account for the second ice pad. And Mr. Chair, if I may, just let me reach back to uh, a previous. <coughs> chart that you had up where you had these little people on, mm -hmm. on on red and blue pads you indicated that there was a need to have two as a minimum but how many hours is the community center plan to be open that two translates into actually how many people because you they're not they're not there the community center will be open 17 hours a day so you're not going to have 17 hour shifts no no but just two on at two on at all times. So those yeah. two are actually four. Um, four people. Potentially, if they're working an eight-hour shift, yes. Well, well, it'd be longer than that. Be uh, so, it, and again, because um, as, when we look at the um, uh, warm side, my recommendation is that it's part-time staff, so that we've got a we've got. Um, but the minimum, the minimum you had, two people. One on each side, two yeah. people. Yeah. But the building is open 17 and a half hours a day. Yeah, 17 hours a day. 17 hours a day. Yeah. Seven days a week. Yeah, I'm sorry, make that. Well, uh, yes, it's open 17 hours a day, and we've got them in uh, one hour before opening. And again, it just depends on really when those first. Um, so, so I guess what I'm getting at is when you talk about two people, do you, do you really mean those are two positions that need to be filled, but how many people will it take to fill those two mm. positions? Well, and again, this is when we when we talk about um, my hiring recommendation. My recommendation is, and it goes back to that original that um, if you go back to the org chart, it'll show you how many heads that I'm I'm um, I'm uh, recommending, as well as on this document here on the staffing, you'll see right here that you know I want to hire eight rink attendants because I want to give them, you know, pretty minimal hours. You know, one might get 20, 17, and then all 15. Knowing that we typically hire under 18-year-old students, and if I was the parent of an under 18-year-old student, working 15 hours a week is enough when they've got school to deal with. So we've got to be cognizant that these are students that, uh, that have other things on their, uh, on their schedule as well. So the, while the head count looks like a lot, there's eight, it's because we want to keep the number of hours that they get reasonable. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So okay. if you look at when we talk about that, um, when we talk about that warm side, if you look at the next um, uh, labor hours, the staffing there. So again, you'll see if you look at that daytime staffing labor hours, we've got one person who will take care of that warm side of the building from open until close. Where are you looking? We're on that chart? We're on the second page of the yes. schedules. We've got one person 
However, I'm recommending that we hire one full-time person, which is the custodian that we talked about last week. And now, um, and we'll, we'll get to this as we talk through it, um, but I'm also recommending that we um, hire six part-timers, a position that we're calling event support staff at 16 hours a week. And these would be, um, these would be tasking jobs. So they'd be there to support the events. When we call an event, really it's just, it's the building opening or it could potentially also be supporting um, any of the events that our RCW team is putting on. So they might come out and <coughs> support uh, the Thursday night experience. Um, we want to make sure that we, we have them, we have them uh, available to do everything that the town needs. So we want to be cautious that the, that the title is very generic. We want them to support everything in the WD. So you can see there, I, we could, I could have easily recommended that it's 126 hours. I could have easily said, let's hire three people at 40 hours each, and that makes 120 hours. Where we lose our flexibility is if somebody calls <coughs> in six, that, that's a full eight hour shift that they're gone. Yep. And then if we have to bring in one of their peers to cover, now we're paying overtime because they've already got their 40 hours. When we hire um, uh, part-timers, we have lots of flexibility so we can cover for sick and vacation, or if we've got, we've got extra things coming, one thing that we talked about is our event support crew. If there's a big event going on, we can um, book it into the cost of the, of the user coming in that we can um, bring them in for extra hours and that would be paid for through the revenues. So we, we want to have this pool of people that we can draw on uh, in order to um, support the events in the community side. Is that making sense so far? Uh, Councilor okay. <coughs> Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. If I may, I just want to go back to something that the director um, commented on. Mm -hmm. And that was, um, you made a statement that a person would be scheduled to come in an hour ahead of their shift. Did I understand that correctly? No, no, no. I apologize if that's how it sounded. No, not necessarily. It would be, they, they'd be scheduled in an hour before the doors open to the public. Oh, the doors open. Right, so they need to come in, they need to do the walk from the building, they make sure that everything's ready. Our first people in that building might be a booking, they might need to set up a room, uh, double check uh, uh, technology and things like that. So again, that's all very flexible, it, it, it could go. Um, it could become a half an hour before the building opens, uh, but we do need to have some leeway that somebody's in the building before our first uh, guests are entering in. If I may, Mr. Chair, can I continue? Carry on. Um, I'm just wondering, I, I still can't get my head around this hour ahead of opening or hour ahead of schedule is what I had said the first time. Um, a half an hour, I think I understand. An hour just seems excessive to me. Um, so that's just yep. my I, I respect my your opinion, and that. we can absolutely um, shave that back to a half an hour. And again, I mean, I think, I think in, in all reason, again, it, we we just be flexible in that because again, if a big group is coming in first thing, that we're gonna we're, if, if we weren't prepping the night before, we're gonna prep that morning. It might require them to be in a little earlier. Might require them to be in a little later. But yes, yeah, nothing's well, guaranteed. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the nice part about the folks that will, will work these position is everything is really based on what's happening in the building that week. So our facilities manager or the supervisor would look at those bookings and determine who needs to be in and at what times. So there's no, unlike our town hall staff um, who know that their work schedule is Monday to Friday, 8 to 4.30, this is a whole different philosophy mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. scheduling this building. Mr. CEO wants to comment. Uh, just, yes, uh, thank you. Just to build on uh, the director's comments, uh, it's important for council to keep in mind that what we're proposing is a six month trial on the building. On so, the staffing. yeah, on the staffing. So, we don't know for sure That's until we open, obviously. So, we're giving our best um, uh, our best effort at uh, right. you know drawing on the, the expertise of our HR director to help us determine that along with our uh, recreation director. So, um, the part of our strategy on this, just as a general statement, is to come in and make a recommendation for six months, see how that goes, and then reassess for the 2019 budget. So just to just to make that clear, nothing's set in stone, but this is a trial. Right. This will definitely be a trial period for us. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Thank you. And if I just may build on what, what our CAO has said, again, keeping in mind that um, what we're doing already on uh, on the arena side is what we're doing now already in our arenas, right? Mm -hmm. It's our arenas right now are very um, um, simple complex to run because people are only in the building when there's something going on in the building. 
right? Whether it might be something that's booked in, in the multi-purpose room upstairs, we've got somebody there because we've got um, karate going on upstairs, or if there's um, free, um, free skate or figure skate, there's somebody in the building because there's a user who's booked the building. Mm -hmm. The PCC, uh, on the other hand, is very different. Again, we're opening our buildings. It's going to be our transit hub. We want people to come in. We want them to, to mill about in the, in the uh, space. Um, the proposed staffing, especially for that side, that's the unknown right now. Can't get any lower than that. Like basically, my recommendation is we're going to have, we have one person there for the operating hours of the building. Okay, anybody uh, any further? Keep going. Yes. Keep going? Okay. Keep going. I just want to go back to, again, sort of, oops, wrong one. I want to go back to that org chart to, to show you again, you know, when we talked about, um, when we talked about this uh, two and a half years ago, we talked about, um, you know, we wanted, we wanted people to feel welcome. We wanted somebody for them to go to. If they walk in the building, there's going to face that, that, that would see them, that would greet them and say welcome and answer all the questions. Um, that was this green spot, this customer service representative slash administrative. That's a position, the intention was, is that was a position that currently exists here in the town, and we were going to just relocate someone from town hall over to the community center. Um, and then we had below them, you'll see we had our reception cashiers. So again, during those peak times, certainly not from open till close as we have um, uh, our custodians and our facility event person, but from, you know, um, 9 until 9 or 10 until 9, our intention was to have that front reception desk manned with somebody who is going to be able to answer questions. Okay, again, this is going back to what the, my original staffing uh, recommendation was. Then we can see, again, over here, we have our supervisor of maintenance. Again, that's a position that, that we're not going forward with. The tradesperson who currently exists, we report to him. And then uh, we have our custodian, so our one permanent. And then the ad, of course, is the proposed is the um, one permanent full-time for the PCC and the five permanent part-times. Again, these are five permanent. I know there's, I know there's some... Um, Concern when we say we're going to hire five more people or potentially six, but again when we're hiring on a part-time basis It's because we need that flexibility and and that ability that should somebody uh, Call in sick or if our volume of business is greater than what we expect it to be We need to bring in more people in order to make sure that that building is cleaned and ready to go for the next day and then uh, some more ads was well, we did have a position that we had talked about which was a porter and then we did have these event laborer folks that I've just been talking about um, now. Okay, so that was going to be my original ask. If you flip to the second page, that's that we made uh, before coming into council last week. Okay, so we completely cut out anybody staffing that um, uh, front desk as soon as you walked in. Okay, so again, right now, the only person that's working the warm side of the building is that one person that's the event support person or the custodian. So we do have somebody there, but they're just not gonna be greeting them at a desk. Okay, so there is somebody there that they can reach who will be walking the building, but there won't be that face as soon as they walk in the building. Okay, we've reduced that second supervisor, which was right here, and we've reduced those additional um, support people down here. So this is what we came in with, as I said, but as, as we as an SMT team went through this, and we talked about that minimum staffing level, and um, I reiterated to my peers exactly what I reiterated to you, that if we don't have that, that group of, of six event support people, we would have one person in this building. One person. One person that who could be on the Zamboni or working in the back, sharpening his blades, and if somebody slips and falls up in the walking track, there's nobody walking that building. Mm -hmm. So again, I reiterated to my peers that from a safety perspective and an understanding of what's happening in the building, that we put that position back in, which is why, again, what we're coming to you today, as you can see, we've added in this, uh, those six uh, part-timers. Okay. Okay, so any questions on that? Sure. Uh, okay. I don't want to be like, just keep going. 
Well, let me just ask an obvious question. Okay. So there is not going to be any receptionist at the front. Nobody. Not so you walk the in the first... building. Yes, you're right. So, and again, it's. I'm familiar it with another facility. The same thing happened. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew there was mm -hmm. signage, mm -hmm. but there's not going to be anybody there. Is that what I'm hearing? It's what you're hearing as far as staffing goes. Now, again, <coughs> in working with our director well, of RCW. I agree. Let's finish off, and then we'll get back to this. In working with our director of RCW, they're working on building a really great volunteer base, and we've got some great mm -hmm. ideas on how to get um, service groups responsible for being okay. there and answering questions. But no, it would not be a town staff member uh, because, again, right now we've cut the ask so minimal okay. that right now all we're making sure is that people are safe. All right, I'm with you. All right, let's carry on. So recommendation three of the orchard is? Okay. So this is the one that we're putting forward. So this um, is the recommended structure for this, yes. for this, for this six months? You know, for, for, yeah, 2017. The building's only open for six months. I'm sorry, 2018. Uh, That's what I want to be clear. And the building's open, yes, for six months. Yeah. And then we've already discussed that um, uh, we'll make sure that during that six months without having, an, without having a staff member um, manning that, um, that desk, what are the impl implications and ramifications of doing that? So we'll make sure that we're collecting our data, we'll collect our comments and feedback from the, from the community and our guests that come in, so that when we come here next year and I propose to you that we staff this with uh, reception slash cashiers, that we've, we've um, um, supported it with data. Uh, Councilor Durley, we'll start Thank with you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I've been in many facilities that when you walk in the door, there is a an electronic screen that gives you a list of all the events and where they're happening. Yeah. I, I think that is the uh, receptionist of the future type of thing. I think actually it's being used very effectively in, in very many modern facilities, and I think that will take some of the scare away from the fact that nobody really is there because in fact anybody can get any information they need from that screen. Yes, and I believe that we're also outfitted with that, so I think you're right, Perfect. that'll answer a lot of questions. Yeah. The other question that was asked last week was about um, percentage, because again, it's facilities, not necessarily PCC. So here, again, this is just, uh, I, I did it in, uh, in color so that you can see that there's very few people who are 100% dedicated to the PCC. All the staff that we're asking for is very much um, going to be doing duties in other facilities and around town. So, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, thanks for that. I mean, that, that, that adds a lot of, lot of clarity. Didn't answer the question I asked, though. Okay. So let, let me see if I can ask it again. Okay. Uh, in, in, but more clearly, so that it's better understood. What, what I'm looking for from a budget perspective mm -hmm. <clears throat> is some understanding of what the cost in 2018 will be for compensation without the PCC. If, if, if we didn't have it, what would it be? If we do have it, and we, we will have it, what will that number be? Mm -hmm. And how much of that number is going to be uh, covered by revenues that are going to be generated by the PCC, such that we have a sense of what the net cost is going to be? I understand that there's going to be a fairly significant headcount of part-time people, young people doing a lot of that work, and that's great. And, and it, it, it adds an awful lot. I'm not sure that it necessarily tells us the information we need about what our, our actual headcount is, because, of course, you have to combine a lot of those and all the mm -hmm. rest of it. But in terms of the budget, what are we going to be paying more net, specifically as a result of the PCC? And I guess the reason I ask that is that we started with a... Um, with, with a pro forma that suggested that we were not going to exceed maximum $200,000 a year in additional operating expense because of the PCC, and I understood that that actually was going to come in a lot better than that. So. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. So, um, uh, as I had mentioned um, last week, so I have that spreadsheet, and I had that spreadsheet ready to go and to be sent to you, and I, and I flipped it over to our CEO because I wanted to make sure that our CEO was comfortable that I was sending it to you and um, 
it, it is an Excel document. You can filter it and have some fun with it and figure everything out, right? Um, we talked about do I send that to you and allow you just to fiddle with it on your own? Um, or if we did it in, in, uh, in um, if I has presented it to you, I was just very um, um, insistent that it become uh, an in-camera session because, again, we're showing people and actual salaries and it's individuals. So, it's so I have that for you. I can give you, and I've, and I've got a hard copy um, potentially right here, but, again, our total PCC salaries uh, now with the addition of those six, uh, which was another, would be... Um, for, I would, I'm going to ballpark and say $440,000 for PCC salaries. Uh, total comps, so then we have to add benefits onto that, would be, uh, again, I'm just ballparking about $480,000. Our PCC budget in the pro forma for year one was a hundred was I'm sorry, was $1,028,000. Okay, so you'll see on that pro forma sheet, I think it said a million three, but I've pulled out the salaries that went to um, our RCW team. Okay, so this was just for facilities. Our pro forma came in at one million and twenty-eight thousand. We're bringing this in at, uh, as I said, um, just over four hundred thousand. So when you consider it's a partial year, we are more than half of what we had committed to on the pro forma, and. We also have a lot of people who are already going to start work now. So again, our uh, manager facilities is already doing PCC work. So a lot of her salary is already being attributed to the PCC. So um, again, this is sort of part of that larger presentation I had originally had uh, scheduled to give to you in the fall, which was to show that, yeah, apples to apples, what we promised in that pro forma is exactly what we're delivering now from that salary base and we've met the, the partial year requirements. So as long as our revenues are exactly what we had committed to in the pro forma, the salaries are absolutely falling in line, and in fact, a little bit lower. Okay, so for clarity, for the year, it would be a million twenty-eight thousand. That was the pro forma budget for one, one for, full For one full calendar year. We're proposing that in 2018, it's how many months that we're looking at? Is it six months or a bit more for training? Uh, it's six months because we're assuming that we're going to take occupancy as of June 4th, which is or June 1st. However, we already have staff who are working on the, on the PCC, so we can already start attributing some of their salaries to the PCC. So for some, it's more. So with this plan, as you're proposing, Yeah. We are at where the pro forma said we were going to be. And lower. We're below it. And, and below it for, mm -hmm. for, for 2018. Yeah. My original staffing model, which, which, which was uh, well staffed, which was this one, also fell in within the model. So the anticipation obviously is that, that in 2019, it will be more than the pro forma, but then we'll know how much more we need to go. It wouldn't be more than a pro forma, because even if we staffed according to my recommendation one, which um, mm -hmm. is which is staffed, our customer service is staffed. Um, uh, we've got um, uh, all of the events all supported by someone. Um, I could we we will stay within our pro forma uh, promise, absolutely. Even with your recommendation one. This recommendation one, and that's how I built it. I mean, I spent the last two and a half years working on a staffing recommendation that fit into the pro forma, so I absolutely kept it. You know, it's, and, and I can fully appreciate that the, the situation that we're in, we did some cuts, uh, and it's only for six months, so that's great too. But yes, in 2017, it'd be great if we can just start getting back to where we think this uh, uh, okay. facility should be. Um, Mary? Just, just on that, I think, I, so just for clarity, because the counselor's kind of... That's good. So the pro forma, if we were to follow the pro forma that was put out, it would be this original recommendation. You're actually coming in based on discussion, and that would be roughly 100000 in the first year. You're coming in at a much different suggestion, and it's, according to this thing, it's, it's to the good, 50000 on the other side it's going to right mm -hmm. okay I think council I was talking to the CEO here I think council looked for an update on the performer what's that going to look like in the future they just haven't had the the chance no. to kind of update it but but I think you know the worst case scenario is the one that was 
uh, when we when this council approved the plan, that's what I don't want to put words in the staff's mouth, but that's what I'm understanding staff are saying, mm -hmm. and and that's in the budget document here. So, yeah, no, I, I through through you, Mr. Chair, I, I I appreciate this presentation. I think it's 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 excellent. The fact of the matter is that we were concerned. Uh, about the accuracy of the pro forma and we were concerned about what the real costs were going to be when we finally hit them And so here we are at budget time looking to see what we want to, to do for 2018 and what we're being told And I I love it is that is that we are going to do as we as we projected So when it comes time to looking at, at the budget and what we ought to accept one of the things that That I think we really need to stay with is is the projection that we gave staff Around what to work for in 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 terms of of, um, of staffing. My problem last week was with with the with all the different classifications of employees. Some being used for the BCC, some shared, some not. Mm -hmm. It was hard to to get to to the bottom line. And I think we're we're there now, at least to my satisfaction. And I I certainly appreciate it. Mr. C. L. I'm. Are you good? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any other? Uh... And Councillor Cape, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and to the director. Can you just clarify for me? Because now it's getting late, and I'm getting tired, and I'm having trouble comprehending where are we at with this plan? Because what you just said a few minutes ago was this original plan was within the perform pro forma. Um, and in fact would come in because we're only operating for six months would come in less than um, Less than what you anticipated now in your cutback, I'll call it We're back to nice white squares here um, And yes that will come in significantly less than 50% of, mm -hmm. of what it would have cost to operate for a year. I have two concerns. My first concern is this is a new facility. We need to put our best foot forward. So what are we giving up by moving from plan A to plan B? My second concern would be, okay, let's say that plan B is the dollar figure that's budgeted, and six months down the road, it becomes very apparent that we should have been operating with plan A, because not only is there a safety factor for the public coming into the building, there's also a huge safety factor for staff being alone in the building, a building of that size. So my second concern of what adjustments will be able to be made, let's say three months down the road, when we realize that plan B was not mm -hmm. the best plan. And you probably can't answer that question. I probably just need an event here. Yeah. Thank you for the time. Uh, <laughs> Madam um, Director, yes, please. Yeah, it's, um, it's um, you know, when, when this project came to me and I heard the vision of council was to make sure that this building was that uh, place for everyone to come um, and for all the demographics and for our seniors to have a wonderful place to go to. Um, this is what I've, for eight years in my career, this is what I did. I opened up large scale buildings with Marple Purses rooms across mm -hmm. Canada. Mm -hmm. So it's completely in my wheelhouse. So I understand the concept of mm -hmm. layering and staff and what we need. Um, I get the fact that because we are where we are now, we need to make some cuts. What I can tell you is based on the cuts that are done, our arenas, our ice will be protected. And I think that's very important because we have a lot of, um, we have our junior Bs and a lot of other contracts that we've signed. We need to make sure that the, that is protected. The anomaly is on that community center side, right? Um, and if we get more bookings than what we had anticipated and one person can't handle it, again, we'll make sure that our, that our uh, user fees 
have that rolled in that they'll need to pay for the staffing of bringing another person on because you're absolutely right if we do get these great stag and does and all these parties happening we can't have that one person alone in the building to handle such a such an event so we can build that in so that gets taken care of um, but at the very least right now and this is where I can feel at least confident in presenting it to you at the very least we have two people in the building at all times to make sure that building is operating. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Anybody else? Any Councilor Kersey? And then I'm cognizant of time. We're not going to finish tonight. I don't think we're going to be able to finish. But it's very, very important because I think you have hit some key points and I just want to crystallize it in such a manner because we've got to move ahead. Set the financial parameters and the operational parameters in place. Plus, we have some other issues to deal with in the overall budget. Councilor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have a couple of questions. I'll try to make it as brief as I can. Last week we talked, or last time we were together, we talked about the creation of the new department within Public Works of Beautification <coughs> and the implications of that in that we need to now create a new position called Facilities Supervisor. If we were, because it's a six-month trial, why could we not defer that creation for the six months, operate with the present staff, assess what the needs are in that area, and then if we see and identify a need, then we could move forward with that in 2019. Mm -hmm. I, I just hate to see us go out and hire a whole bunch of people, and then we start rolling back. I'd rather build it as we go, mm -hmm. from my perspective. Um, so if we were to not create the new department this year in 2018, continue with the supervision as it is, run for six months with our current supervision and our manager of facilities, uh, what are the implications of that on, on, the, sal on the salary component? Um. For you, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, we discussed this at length, and um, we still, as a group, firmly believe that positions that we have put forward are required to open up the building safely. So to pull it, even though there might be some savings for salaries, um, the uh, implications that it will do to the entire organization are something that just needs to also be considered. So for example, our supervisor right now, facilities and beautification, um, he runs the Zamboni. So there are shifts where he is on the Zamboni. So he'll fill in if somebody's sick or if something needs to be done. So he'll run a shift on the Zamboni. He'll also do shifts in beautification. So he is out there helping to cut down trees and, and, and mowing lawns. And um, so he, as much as he is supervising, whenever he needs to, he needs to jump in and help the crew. If you recall a presentation that came to council in 2015, that in 2015 it highlighted that at that time we were seven full-time staff members short from where we should be. Since that time we've hired one, so we're still six short from that recommendation that came in in 2015. That didn't even take into consideration the addition of the PCC. So while I hear what you're saying, the staff that we have on are doing double and triple duty as it is. That we even talked about it and we said, okay, so if we left the supervisor as one, supervisor of facilities and beautification, he can work out of our Tice Road Operations Center with the beautification team. Inadvertently, we're gonna be making a supervisor in the facility anyway, because we're gonna to have to look at our top performing to get that person to start um, managing staff and creating schedules and taking care of attendance and answering questions. So someone will always have to rise to that leadership challenge. Let's at least make it the person that we want it to be. Let's put someone in there who's competent to do that job, not somebody who has to take on the responsibilities because there's nobody else in the building to do it. So I understand what you're saying, but we have vetted through this and every connotation of it. And I think we're pretty confident that these are the positions that we're saying. We Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, if I may. All right. Councilor Kersey, yes. I, I just want to caution uh, there we've got four minutes left for curfew. I still can sense that there's still a lot of questioning, some comments. So if 
We'll proceed and we may need to reconvene because we still got some other major mm -hmm. issues to deal with. So do you want to just reconvene? I think that's probably the best. I think personally I would rather see us reconvene and, and then because we're not going to get uh, just I, I like I like what you and let me just because I'm I used to work so just so I'm clear in my infantile stupid head um, this staffing is is actually the cold place and the hard place, right? These charts. Yes. Right? That's what I want to understand. The whole this is the whole building. I want to understand. I like things simple. So this yeah. is to run both both sides of the building. Not that one sheet that you have, the two sheets in Yeah, there's two sheets. I got both yes. the sheets. Okay. Yes. So this is the staffing for the building. This is the recommended operating structure to start. Um you Except you have that's the that's the but the white I'm not that's this fine. this yeah. is how we we would open up on July first just so you can help me it the makes it makes it a lot easier recommendation three so it's yeah. recommendation three yeah so not this one these are the ones that are going this but is it's the these two no I understand it's, that yes, but but this it. is the way it would look yes recommendation three recommendation three, three is what you're recommending to open yes, the facility right yes okay that's at a minimum. At a minimum, I understand that because I've done this before. So the ideal you deal with, you went in the middle. Okay, all right. So let's stop there. If I can have a motion to uh, recess, House Ribiak, we don't need a seconder. And uh, Madam Chair or Madam Clerk, we need we need to set a time to reconvene. No meeting for Monday the twenty second. Uh, Sounds good to me. There is now. <laughs> there is now. So why don't we reconvene at 6.30 and we'll deal with the operator. Are all of you good with that? When? We won't be here Monday. Yeah. When will, when can, just that date? Yeah, the 22nd, 23rd, I'm out here. I'm, like, I'm at a conference. Okay. All right. Well, could Charlotte come in and... Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I can come in. You know, be honest. Yeah, see, that's right. I think Charlotte, we got through most of it, Teresa. I think yeah, no, I know. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I just didn't know if you wanted to. Or you want to do the 29th? Yeah, with us. Yeah, let yeah. us figure it out, Mr. Mayor. I agree. All right. Midweek. Mid -week. Mid Midweek is on good, too. So why don't you, um, yeah, you, got, you guys figure it out. Right. Figure it out. We're good. All right. That being the case, uh, this meeting is adjourned, is recessed. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> My brain. Oh.